the system approaching perfection. We'll walk deeper into the belly of the beast if it means I'm able to further limit rest. I'm Dan, the other Dan from uh, The Crypto Show, and I'm here at a crypto cannabis convention with uh, Lynn Ulbricht, the, uh, the mother of Ross Ulbricht, the, uh, the guy that ran or founded the uh, Silk Road. So I guess we're going to jump in and go to uh, the topic that most people seem to miss a lot, and that is the, uh, the murder for hire allegations. I see a lot of people uh, commenting and saying that he shouldn't have murdered someone when they don't really know that that's something that didn't actually happen. So could you maybe enlighten us on that kind of stuff? Yeah, and uh, just sort of uh, part of that is we don't really know who was running the Silk Road yeah. at different times. So um, <clears throat> the uh, basically the prosecution uh, brought up murder for hire at Ross's bail hearing. They didn't inform the defense until the 11 o'clock the night before that they were even going to bring such allegations. So he couldn't defend against it. And they used it to deprive Ross of bail, saying he was dangerous. And yet two months later, they dropped all these charges. So these charges of murder for hire were never brought to trial. They were never put before a jury to rule on. Um, they were never proven. And yet the media picked up on the whole thing. And it has become sort of part of the quote unquote story that's founded in nothing but a government allegation that was dropped. Now there is a um, indictment in Maryland that does talk about the murder for hire. It's never been prosecuted, it's never been proven, and it's based on uh, evidence that was supplied by Karl Mark Force, a corrupt DEA agent uh, who is now in prison, who was part of the Silk Road investigation, and he used that uh, position to steal money, and we don't know what else he did uh, as far as the site. He had the ability to change things on the site and do all kinds of mischief. So this is, a, this is um, a terrible smear on Ross, who's a very peaceful person. His philosophy has always been, do no harm. Silk Road, was that was one of their tenets of their manifesto, is everything's voluntary, you don't use force against people. Uh, and it's also a question in the Supreme Court right now uh, brought that question forward because the judge used these allegations of murder for hire to enhance a <laughs> outrageous double life plus 40 year sentence for Ross uh, for all nonviolent charges but she threw in murder for hire as a justification when it was never ruled on by a jury which is in violation of our sixth American Sixth Amendment right to a jury trial and one of the reasons the founders even wrote the Sixth Amendment was to protect the accused from judges deciding something was true without the benefit of 12 of their peers deciding it was true. This one judge who could be corrupt, who could be um, a rogue judge, who could just be ignorant, whatever. I mean, I'm talking about in general. And um, that's why we have the Sixth Amendment, and yet this judge violated it blatantly and used the uh, murder for hire charges that were unproven to give him a life sentence. So, and, and as, you know, it's morphed now into people casually say it's murder charges. No one was murdered. There was no body. This was, um, the evidence in Maryland, like I said, was based on a chat that was submitted by Carl Force, who's a corrupt agent now in prison. Could have written the whole thing. There's no, there's no validation of who was part of that chat. So it's, it's um, a terrible smear, it's, it, and I think it's something that the government does. I've been told by other people who've been in drug uh, cases that they did the same thing to them. So um, that's pretty much the story. Yeah, and uh, I remember reading about the supposed uh, victim came out right. on Twitter and said that this didn't actually happen. I don't believe he's the guy that actually did this. Right, he did. Curtis Green was the target, supposed <clears throat> target of uh, murder for hire by supposedly Ross, and he tweeted, it's on the homepage of freeross.org, the tweet, <clears throat> saying, um, I know things that he has a high level admin I can't talk about right now, but that I'm sure he didn't do it, and that he's not dangerous and he doesn't deserve this sentence. So even the target of the supposed murder for hire, bogus thing, doesn't think he did it. Yeah. You know, uh, but it, it's, 
has seems to have a life of its own as well as many other things people say on social media oh there was this then on Silk Road and that on Silk Road could I see your source because that wasn't you're wrong and uh, but it's so much more exciting and yeah. saying well there was raw milk on Silk Road oh there were books there were you know there was pot you know well that's not very exciting of course so can you tell us how this uh, murder for hire actually happened well whether the murder the murder for hire didn't actually happen okay yeah. so let's just be clear that there was a um uh, according to the federal agents now in prison it was a setup uh and what happened was that curtis green who was a high level admin uh, agreed to accept a delivery of drugs at his home and the person orchestrating this was carl mark force one of the corrupt agents so when he gave him his address. A SWAT team showed up at his home. He was arrested, and he was um, then uh, basically uh, pressured uh, to give them a back door to Silk Road. And actually, uh, Sean Bridges, one of the other corrupt agents who was working for the Secret Service and the NSA at the time, uh, took Green and. Um, basically had him spell out how, how to get in, how to get Bitcoin, uh, and use that information to steal. Uh, the two of them, it accumulated over a, a million dollars in thefts with this information in the back door to Silk Road. So um, they claim that they sent DPR a chat and that you know they were engaged in a chat with DPR who supposedly agreed to pay them. They said, oh, this guy's blackmailing you. He's going to give away all the um, names of your vendors and they'll, they'll be persecuted and put in jail. So they claim, DPR said, well, I'll pay you to um, have him killed. And to prove to DPR that he was killed, they claim that they had Curtis Green pose as, you know, a corpse, bloody, blah, blah, blah. And they sent these pictures to DPR so that they could get paid. Um, who DPR was at the time is unknown. Uh, whether DPR even was part of this or whether it was a complete script written by those cops is unknown. Um, to get the money, to, um, to uh, distract from their own nefarious deeds. Um, but that's how it, it happened. And the person who was posing dead as a corpse is the one who came out and said, I don't believe it was Ross publicly yeah yeah so these uh, corrupt officers where are they now what is it what is happening to them well they're they've admitted to stealing over a million dollars from uh, vendors on the Silk Road and they are in prison one got seven years I think and one got six years prison uh, and uh, they're just serving that time unfortunately the uh, all their emails are encrypted and in the the government has not decrypted those emails. We don't know what was in them or what they exposed. Uh, there's a lot of sealed evidence. There's a lot of undisclosed information about this whole thing. I don't really understand why the government continues to hide what's in there unless there's something in there that uh, they don't want us to know. But uh, so it's. But right now it's kind of murky. They're in there and they're uh, serving that time. Yeah. So. The, I guess, evidence that these officials created, I've heard that that evidence can't be used, or couldn't have been used in uh, the current case. So they uh, they had to postpone the case that came before Ross's case in order uh, yeah. to uh, I, it, have it, I guess, go more towards their side. Uh, I, think, I think what you're referring to is um, while these these agents were under investigation, um, Ro the, we, Ross was moving towards his trial, and when it was uh, revealed to the defense that these guys, well, actually only one of them was revealed until after trial, but that Karl Mark Force was a corrupt agent that had access to the site, could change passwords, PIN numbers, act as DPR, uh, change things on chats and on the forum and on the marketplace, could add and subtract data from the evidence, what, be what became evidence. The defense is like, well, we want to be able to present this to the jury. This casts reasonable doubt on Ross's guilt. And the 
prosecution said, no, no, we can't do that because that will tip off the agent that he's under investigation and it'll hurt our investigation. So we, the defense said, okay, we'll wait. Go ahead with your investigation, then we'll have the trial. Well, the judge would not allow that to happen. She said, no, we're going to go ahead with the trial and just not let the jury know about this corrupt agent, either of them. She didn't know about the second one. And uh, so it was not allowed to be known to the jury that there was a corrupt agent at the core of the investigation with unfettered access to the entire server and site um, and the ability to change all kinds of very important information that was used as evidence. This is, this is really outrageous. Yeah. And, and it turned out that the prosecutor was lying, that he actually, that the agents had been interviewed by law enforcement and knew darn well they were under investigation. So um, he just said that to the judge, lied to her in court, and then two months later it all came out. But the, the trial was over and Ross was convicted and sentenced to life in prison. Wow, so there's nothing that could be done with this new information. Or uh, rather, they wouldn't trial. allow anything to be done no. at the time. Yeah, no, no, not at the time. It was totally, anything that even came close to being about Carl Force was was not allowed to be mentioned and uh, it would take a new trial to bring it up which we hope to have we hope to have a new trial fair trial this time how is this whole situation doing in current times you said you were looking at getting a new trial well that's yeah i mean that would be that's one of the goals yeah. um, right now uh, ross appealed his case to the appellate court second circuit of uh, new york uh, uh, the, the Second Circuit, New York's one of the states, and they denied it. They did not seem concerned that there was these corrupt agents that had free access to the site. They didn't see how that affected anything, which to me is pretty amazing. Um, and they denied all of the appeal, um, including the sentence, uh, changing the sentence. So Ross and his team, a new team, uh, uh, had petitioned the Supreme Court in December 21 groups across the political spectrum uh, joined in support of that petition in five amicus briefs, all saying to the court, this is important. There's some very important questions here. Fourth Amendment questions, Sixth Amendment questions. I refer to the Sixth Amendment about the jury trial, and the Fourth Amendment question is, does the government have the right, without a warrant, without probable cause, to search and seize and surveil an individual's internet browsing activity and because uh, right now they don't need a warrant or any oversight whatsoever to delve into all of your internet activity which is very revealing a very personal relevant information yeah political affiliations religious affiliations sexual orientation medical information on and on which they can use to persecute you they can use it to um, blackmail judges blackmail congress people or just delve in, do whatever they want. They, you know, the t we know the government has targeted individuals. Um, this is a very serious question, and it's now through Ross's case before the Supreme Court, and uh, they have not denied it. They, um, we think, will probably group it with another Fourth Amendment case that has to do with cell phone tracking, um, called Carpenter versus U.S. So they, I'm very, very happy to say they did not reject it. So it's in the mix and uh, hopefully will be used for our privacy and our freedom on the internet. So how could uh, public opinion help this case out and how can people uh, get involved with this and maybe provide some kind of assistance? Yeah, well, public opinion is very important. Uh, it's difficult in our situation because much of the media will just take what the government says and take it out there and then they echo each other. I've become very, very skeptical of the media in general. Uh, to be accurate, to see the deep, bigger picture, to um, not just, I mean, frankly, say things that are absolutely not true. And then, uh, so that's a problem. Uh, but I've been working very hard to change the narrative for four years with social media and grassroots efforts and speaking out. And, you know, like for instance with the murder for hire, if you just think about it, they didn't charge him with it. 
That's yeah. all you really need to know. It doesn't really make sense. You know, he's being lynched by the media, but there's no proof. And, and it's very important because, you know, we should care about proof and and uh, being tried by a jury. That's a real core part of our criminal justice system in this country and has been since we were founded. And to just go, it's it, otherwise it's just a mob rule. So I, it, I think it could really help. Uh, and I think it has helped to, I think the narrative has changed somewhat, but it's still a prevalent thing because it sticks in your mind. Oh, murder for hire. Yeah. Um, and it's much more exciting, like I said, than raw milk or books or paintings or, you know, marijuana or whatever. Um, but it helps, and I ask people to please help us spread the word on social media and, and um, you know, just put it out there to and to refer people to our website, freeross.org. Um, the real fight, though, is in the courts, and it's expensive. We have top flight lawyers, I'm thrilled to say, but it is an expensive um, thing. And um, so, of course, we were always raising money. Um, and uh, but also there's other ways to help like different volunteer uh, things like skills and um, you know it's mainly me and I don't have those skills so I just keep putting things on the back burner and then I'll delegate but it, it's like the more people can kind of take over and help me with some things and some people have it makes all the difference so it doesn't have to just be money although money helps uh, we have a lot of different ways to do that small and large on our website um, and we have a store and we have um, the tax deductible option that supports us and different different ways. Um, there's an art game based on art that Ross did in prison. That's a dollar to participate. Things like that. It all adds up. So I would say spread the word and um, just help us because it's not only for Ross, it's not only for, um, you know, for our family, it's really for everyone's future in the digital age because there's some very important, crucial uh, issues at stake. We're going to have links and stuff in the description for any way you can contribute. Go to freeross.org. So, uh, thank you for watching. <laughs>